I've shared details on how and why I bought my first house at 22 years old, first home buyer tips, and how much money I needed to buy my home. I even showed you guys how my house looked completely empty and took you along my journey on decorating some of the key rooms in my house. But then I realized I have been holding out because I haven't shared one of the key parts to my decorating process, which is how I bring my decor visions to life on Photoshop first. So welcome to my home series mini series for how I used Photoshop to interior design my house. Let's do it. What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Alexis and currently I'm doing a home series where I just talk about my experience as a young home buyer and give you guys some tips along the way as well as just show you how I'm decorating my house. I also do some other things on my channel and I'll continue to just show you guys a little bit more of my life, but that's basically what this channel is about. So, so in today's video, I'll just be sharing some tips and tricks for how you can use Photoshop or any type of like online design tool um, to virtually interior design a room for yourself. Like I said earlier, this is one of the key things that I always do um, to help me kind of just be more confident in my decisions when decorating the rooms in my house. But disclaimer, I am by no means no means an expert at Photoshop, but I have been using Photoshop for some years now, honestly. But as always, I just wanna kind of share what I can bring to the table to you guys. This is the table and this is this is what I'm bringing to it. But I do have a pretty simple five-step process that I typically always use when I'm like decorating before executing. And um, I hope you guys find it helpful. But yeah, without further ado, let's get right into it. So for today, I'm going to show you guys a design for the living room. So just a little caveat, I did end up doing a different design for my actual living room just because of the furniture pieces that I had for the design. I ended up wanting something completely different, but this was one of my favorite designs. And since no one has seen it, I decided I would show you guys. So I have my Photoshop open and really I just use three main tools for these projects, which are the move tool, the quick selection tool, and the rectangle tool. So yeah, those are basically the three that I use um, and then sometimes the eraser. But step number one is to just get a blank, I guess, canvas to use. Um, I like to use an empty picture of the room that I'm decorating. Or you can always just pull an image from online um, to use as inspiration or really whatever you want. Step number two is to create the wall colors. So picking a color from the color wheel, I'm using this like tan grayish beige color. Um, another tip is if you find a color that you really like, you can look up the RGB code online and just place it in here. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to use my rectangle tool to create a rectangle, which I'm going to warp into the correct size for the walls. I like to use the perspective warp feature. So if you go up to edit, you can scroll down and see perspective warp, but it's grayed out because I need to convert this to a smart layer. So with that layer selected of the rectangle, I just right click it and convert it to a smart layer. Don't know what it means, I just do it. Um, so then I click the perspective warp, size up my rectangle, change it to the warp function, and then size it up to each corner of the wall. It's that easy. And not sure if you can tell in this picture, but I do have crown molding, so I like to put the wall color under the crown molding at the top and then a little bit above the trim at the bottom just to kind of see how the color would look against the molding and trim. Then once that is in place, I like to rename my layers so that I can easily reference them later. So I just named this one back wall and then I hid the layer so that I could bring the outlets forward. So zooming in, I'm going to take the quick selection tool so that I could select all of the outlets. And once they were all selected as I wanted them to, I would just clean them up using the minus selection tool um, to just basically deselect anything that I didn't want. Um, once I did that, I just did control C or command C to copy and then command V to paste the new layer with the outlets and then renamed them accordingly. Also, in order for them to show up above the walls, I have to move their layer above the wall that I put and then when I unhide it you can see the outlets are now in front of the wall color. So I do this exact same process for the other wall as well as the windows to bring them in front and we are done with step 
two. Step three is to find and input furniture. So I found most of my furniture from Rooms to Go. Like I said, I ended up not using this actual design because I ended up going with different furniture, but it's really simple and easy to just check on different furniture sites. I find this to be helpful because if you do find something you really like, you can easily order it online or just go in store and see how you like it in person. So um, for this design, I used a regular sofa and just copy the image that you like and paste it into Photoshop. From here, I can just resize it as I need to and adjust my layer so that the sofa is brought to the front. We're also going to perspective warp the sofa so that it is angled a little bit just so it looks a little bit more realistic. Of course, this is just a digital design so nothing will be perfect, but I will say um, a tip would be to take measurements of your room and compare that to the measurements of these furniture pieces because that is the mistake that I have always made by not doing that and then I end up not liking the size of the furniture or I get something way too big really you can't win so definitely um if you can take measurements of your space as well as um the furniture pieces that you're looking to put in so follow that same process of just finding different furniture pieces online I can't remember where I found these little white accent chairs but they were from an online store um and I just copied the different angled pictures that they had online and placed them into my photoshop project you can also take individual pictures of actual furniture pieces that you have in your real life and place them into your projects to see how they would look as well. That's what I did with my coffee table and side tables. These were actual tables that I had in my actual house. I just took a picture of them and placed them into the project. One thing I also really liked about uh, this design was the floating TV panel. I ended up not going with this, but I thought it was super cute. Um, so I just Google searched floating TV panel, went to images, and then copied an image from an online site and pasted it into my project. I find it easier to use some of the lifestyle images that I already have to court on them um, so that I don't have to tamper with adding more to see how it would look in my space. Once pasted, I'll use the move tool to move it where I want it to go, resize as needed, and then take the quick selection tool to select all of the image that I would want. So that would be the TV, um, the floating panel, and some of the decor pieces. And then I copy and paste to add that new layer and then erase the old layer that contains the background. This would just leave the floating panel. Now on to step four, which is the decor. So this is also one of the fun parts and brings the whole entire design to life. And honestly makes my shopping process a little bit easier because I know what exact pieces I'm looking for. Really anything decor wise, you can just play around and see what you want. Um, also, I really just like, again, looking on actual sites a lot of times so that if I do decide to go with everything that's in my design, I can just go to those exact links and order them. So then again, I take my quick selection tool to select only the rug, copy and paste it so that I can only take the rug and not use the background. It's also helpful to find PNG or transparent images online, but sometimes that's hard to do. Um, so this is just another workaround. Um, then I am just shifting my layer order so that the rug can be under the coffee table. And then I'm going to perspective warp after I resize so that it can be angled um, to fit nicely into the room. I wasn't really feeling the throw pillows that were on that rooms to go sofa so I like to look up my own throw pillows online um, find something that I like copy and paste it you know the drill at this point and um, put it into my design then to duplicate it I just copied and pasted um, the same pillow and then also added some white throw pillows to give it some pizzazz. I definitely feel like step four is one of the most important parts because it is the makeup to the face. As my mom says, the eyebrows to the look. Um, it's what brings everything together to make it actually look good. So get fun with this part and find whatever your heart desires. For the curtains, I follow a similar process, except um, this image, the curtains were kind of closed and I wanted to see what they looked like open. So I ended up selecting half of the image, copying, pasting it on one side of the windowsill, and then 
duplicating that to flip it over on the other side. Then I used the rectangle tool to just add a little black rod in the middle to make it look like it was actually there. Of course, I couldn't forget a nice floor plant, so added that, adjusted everything for last finishing touches, and that is it. You could, of course, put more decor or get fun with it, putting artwork on the wall, or even test out different wall colors, really anything you want to experiment with. And last and final step number five is literally just to save, export, and execute. So obviously make sure you're continuing to save your project along the way. Right at the end, I like to save as a project and also save as a JPEG. From there, I will share it to my phone and that way I can just take that picture easily with me to different stores so I can refer to my design um, whenever I'm looking for things. And yeah, that's basically it. So that is how I designed my living room on Photoshop. Obviously I ended up executing something a little bit different um, and you guys actually have not seen my final living room. So, <laughs> excellent. But this is just a starter example. All of the rest of the rooms that I'm gonna be showing you, most of them are exactly what I had designed. I ended up executing to the T for the most part. So if you are interested in this mini series and you'd like to see how I decorated the other rooms in my house that are reflective of the design, showing some of those before and after pictures, then make sure you subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notifications to be updated every time I upload. Also, my final house tour will be coming very soon, hopefully. I'm still waiting on some things because of COVID, but um, make sure to check out the rest of my actual home series and wait for that final house tour. Yeah, comment down below what room you guys want to see next. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye.